Um, for my simulator, um, I painstakingly converted everything to C++ and uh, got my simulator running in Unreal Engine. So that helps with a lot of things um, that hopefully you'll, you'll see. Um, so the first thing I'm going to start out with is uh, talking about the physics. Um, I kind of just want to start out by going over kind of how it's implemented in Unreal Engine, um, just because this took me a while to figure out. Um, so basically how it works is um, I implemented the entire like flight simulator that we've created into one just big class. Um, and then that class, um, I just create a version of that class with an Unreal Engine. Um, and kind of how C++ is formulated, it, for those who don't know, um, you've got big, I've got your big, you've got your big class, you declare all your functions, um, and then you have all these global variables, which is kind of nice. In Python, it can get really confusing going between global and local variables and stuff like that. Um, so you've got all these global variables that hold all the states and uh, all the things that are used throughout the different uh, functions. Um, and then the class is broken up and here's, this is almost all of the, uh, it's missing some of the quaternion functions, but this is most of the functions um, that I have uh, implemented. But most of these are actually hidden from Unreal. Um, and these are actually just called from within other functions, kind of how we know how you got your state change goes into your integrator that goes into different things. Um, and the main two kind of functions that Unreal uses is I've got, I've got an initialization function um, that reads in the JSON file, the same one that we've been using throughout the class. Um, and then I've got one that uh, is called every frame. Um, in Unreal, they call that a tick. Uh, so it's called every tick. And um, that up updates the states and does all the dynamics and so on and so forth. Um, and then all these other functions are kind of grouped and contained within these uh, kind of to support it in one way or another. Uh, and then what happens is after I've written all those um, classes, once I've written that class in C++, then I can go into Unreal Engine and they have this thing called Blueprints, which is like a visual scripting language. Um, and this makes it really easy to kind of prototype different things. Um, and I've kind of just set it up so that the class holds all the flight sim physics and stuff. Um, and then Unreal, I'll use blueprints to just call some of the functions from that. Um, so here you're seeing the initialization. So you've got that initialize aircraft from JSON file or that function that I was talking about from the class. Um, and that's been extended into blueprints. And then I can set the position and location and different variables of the, they call them actors, but that's basically your object. So the aircraft is an actor um, and I can set its position and locate and rotation and stuff based off of my big physics class. So this is kind of how the initialization works. Um, you can see there's some coordinate transformations from some, re some reason real has a left-handed coordinate system, but um, for the most part, it's pretty simple once you get your kind of functions to connect it in with Unreal. Um, and then this is the other big section of the simulator is the tick dynamics. So every tick, it calls all of these functions. Um, and the main one is this tick aircraft state. So what this does is it calculates the new state and then it sets that global variable. And then I can access that variable through the get states, um, update the position and stuff. And then over here, I've got a bunch of stuff that handles collisions um, that needs to be handled every frame. Um, that is something I'll talk about a little bit later. Uh, for my stall model for the physics, um, I just use the same one that most people talked about from the handbook. Um, you can see my sigmoid functions and stuff. I ended up using um, an alpha of 25 degrees and an M of 40, I believe. That's what my memory told me of what Dr. Hunsaker recommended. Um, and the, the slightly higher M helps because I kind of actually want to stall it just to be able to demonstrate uh, some of the stall things. Um, so the kind of higher value is, is nice there. Um, here is my latitude and longitude function, I use the spherical Earth approximation. Um, and that just, so I set up a separate function that is then nested within that big aircraft state updating function, the tick aircraft states. Uh, so that's called every frame to update your latitude and longitude. 
and then I can display that. Um, the thing that I kind of added uh, to the physics is collisions. Um, so this is kind of a, a funny, funny looking uh, explosion. Um, basically when the aircraft uh, collides with anything, and this works with the three-dimensional terrain within the engine, um, it'll destroy the, the aircraft. Um, and then you can reset the simulation by pressing the button. <clears throat> Uh, I was originally thinking about doing um, actual landing and stuff like that, but that's actually pretty complicated to do, and I'll talk about that in my um, section about the limitations. So, um, like I was talking about, the collisions just kind of destroy the aircraft. Um, they kind of turn off the physics class. Um, they don't actually, you know, update the position and stuff very much. Um, that part was pretty hard to figure out how to line up Unreal's collision kind of physics stuff with my internal physics of the class. Uh, that was a little complicated to do. So um, I just ended up blowing up the aircraft when I hit the ground. <clears throat> um, some other limitations is that it only trims right during initialization. Um, I don't have any way to trim it during the initialization. But what's nice is I can reset the flight back to that trans, uh, uh, condition at any point just by pressing the reset button. Uh, so that gives it a nice way of kind of going back to where it was. Um, my HUD isn't as complete as Pilot because I had to build it all from scratch. Um, and it also lacks the first person view. Uh, that's pretty simple to do it. I just have to add some more camera logic in there. Sorry, my voice is a little <clears throat> so I'll try there. Um, and then I haven't quite set up the control deflections. Um, the F-16 model I have does actually have the ability to move the control surfaces, but I just haven't set up all the animations and stuff to work with the variables. Um, so those are some of the limitations with my simulator. Um, and as far as the graphics goes, rather than listing off and talking about all the graphics things, I think the time would be better spent with me just in the simulator. Um, but here are some things to look out for, I guess. Um, so some of the features include, so I've got the Cesium plugin. Um, and what that does is it kind of like Microsoft Flight Simulator, it's able to stream in uh, data, like geographical data from being maps and stuff. And so you'll see in the simulator, we are actually in Logan. And so it's two scale Logan, it's got the terrain, it's got the, it doesn't have like building models, but it has, you know, the, the Bing Maps uh, satellite images kind of displayed across the terrain. <clears throat> I've also got an F-16 model um, in there that's really nice. I found it in the Unreal Marketplace. Um, I've got a custom HUD. Uh, I have a button that'll turn the controls on or off. Um, this is my solution to kind of being able to both fly it and also seat the trim state. So it starts trimmed and then I can press a button to get control of the aircraft and then I can use um, a controller to control it. <clears throat> so the, uh, the, I've also got keyboard input as well as uh, controller input. I'm using mode one controller. So left, you've got your elevator and your rudder. And then on the right, you've got your ailerons. Um, and then I use triggers to increment the throttle. Uh, so that's slightly different than mode one, technically. Um, and then I've got some stall warnings that'll pop up when it stalls. Um, I've got collision explosions, and it actually leaves behind some fire. So you can see where your previous uh, your previous collisions have been, your previous crashes. Uh, that's kind of fun to do. Um, and then the, it's really cool uh, kind of how the lighting works. You can actually move the sun around um, and do different times of day. And it's got a whole atmospheric setting. So once it gets to sunset, which is the setting that I have. Um, so the simulator is going to be running close to sunset. So you can see kind of like the changes in the atmospheric lighting due to that time of day. So there's basically a lot of this stuff is just kind of built into Unreal that I can harness. Um, so most of the work was just getting it to work in Unreal Engine. Um, and a lot of this stuff are just nice features that I could find from plugins and other sources and compile it all in here. So that is the PowerPoint presentation.
So I'm going to pull up Unreal right now. Um, and I'm going to go ahead and hopefully this isn't too choppy. Does it look OK to everyone? Yeah. It's pretty smooth. Cool. Yeah, so this is running. Um, and luckily, I have a good enough computer. So this is running at 120 FPS or something like that. Um, so my basic little HUD there, it just shows the latitude, longitude, and altitude. Um, and you can see those updating real time, which is kind of cool. Um, and then I have the aileron elevator runner and throttle just because I don't have the control surfaces visible. So it's kind of nice to have some kind of input to know what it's at. Um, this is trimmed to just basic steady level, uh, steady level flight. Um, and we are currently flying over Logan. We started at the Logan Airport. Um, we're just kind of moving around. Um, and if I press the button, now I've got control of the aircraft. And I have modified some things. So I'm not getting full uh, de deflections in all my control surfaces. Um, I decrease them. I think that's only like 60% of the maximum value. And that makes it a lot more controllable. And then I also have the CG shift, which helps it uh, kind of be a little more steady. Um, so we're flying over Logan. Um, I'm going to boost the throttle up because it's fun to fly faster. Um, uh, and let's see if I can just fly around a little bit. So I guess I'll just fly around and people can ask questions if they want. Um, there's the airport right there that we started at. Yeah. yeah, so that's kind of where I started the original location. What's cool is this is an actual like globe that it's streaming in. Uh, so if I went high enough, you could actually like see the earth. Yeah, <clears throat> uh, it's I actually tested that out the other day. Um, and it it's just like you couldn't control it anymore because the atmospheric conditions, but it was kind of fun. Um, it's pretty fun to go. I think this is Logan Canyon that I'm flying through right now. So it's kind of fun to go nice and close and fly around in Logan Canyon. Uh, I may have spent a little too much time on this, just flying around. Uh, but yeah. Where, where is it loading all of the terrain from? So this is actually being streamed in from the cloud. So Cesium is like a cloud service. So if I were to actually like ship this as a complete commercial game, I'd have to pay like a monthly fee to use their servers and stuff. Um, but since it's just a personal project, anyone can use this for free. Um, it's, it's kind of the similar thing to what they do in Microsoft Flight Simulator, um, where it's only loading in the data that it needs. So it basically uses the camera, it projects out what the camera can see, and then it'll load in different quality um, it's called level of detail, and that's a big part of Unreal Engine. That's why it can run so smoothly with all of these graphics, is that it changes how detailed they are depending on the distance. So that stuff way out there, they're probably like really rough, low polygon count meshes. <clears throat> but when you get closer, you might actually be able to see this. There's like little patches that'll load in the closer you get to the ground as it tries to increase the quality. Can you show us some of your collision stuff you're talking about? Oh, yeah. Yeah, crash it. Oh, gosh. What just happened? It just crashed. <laughs> the game crashed. Oh, there we go. Let's restart. Here, I'll do one a little bit closer, and maybe it won't freak out as bad. Let's just clash right on the runway. There we go. So there's an explosion, and then it leaves behind a little bit of fire there that you can actually see. So that stays there. So that kind of indicates where your previous crash was. That's incredible. Yeah. Now I'm kind of getting a little too close. Don't have any flow. There we go. But yeah. This is really cool. Yeah. Um, and then I've got a button so I can turn on the control, on and off the controls. And that's kind of how I did the, the thing at the beginning. So if I turn the controls off, it just locks the controls where I'm at right now. So it doesn't get any more input from the controller. Uh, so it isn't really like Ben's cool auto trimmer, but it allows you to lock the controls if you need to. Uh, that just kind of helps some things. Is time ticking on this in the sense that it's changing the location of the sun? So if you kept flying, the sun would eventually set or is the time? No. Okay. The time is set, but I could easily have it update in real time. Um, I could actually show that really quick. So 
this object right here, there's a little setting right here called solar time. So let's get let's zoom out a little bit so you can see the Earth a little more. So this is really cool. So this is the whole thing. Um, and then if I change the solar value, it'll actually move the sun around and it updates the atmospheric lighting based off of that. So this would be kind of morning time and then it gets dark, right? So it's got, there's so many cool robust systems that people have already built into Unreal Engine uh, that you just have to like go and find and figure out how it works and then just add it in and hook it up to your game. Uh, so it's got all sorts of cool stuff. So if I press play right now, now we're gonna be flying kind of more morning time rather than uh, the evening. So yeah, the sun's in a different spot and the shadows and the lighting all update. So yeah, I guess that's that's the simulator. That's Very nice. Fifteen minutes. So, questions.